at the net, trying to get cross court block in, the right shot, not well executed. It's the Indonesians, Fadi Lau and Angreni that lead 11 10. And very nicely poised game. So, Nathan, this is an opportunity for the coaches to come in and play their part. What would each coach be saying to their players, do you think? Well, I think the Indonesian coach would probably be the, the happy of the coaches at the moment, has seen their pair develop into the game, grow in confidence. And I think at this mid-game interview, certainly the Indonesian pair looked the stronger in the second half of that uh, first section of the game. So the German pair, potentially, I think they need to control the court a bit more, get, get away from the flat, fast exchanges, because uh, I really think the Indonesian man, Fadila, is very strong in that department. Yeah, we've not seen any yeah. what I would consider really huge booming smashes from the back of the court from either pair either. You know, maybe a tactic for the Germans would be to get it to the back. Yeah, I think, Fadila work. I think so. I think, like we say, there's been a lot of fast, 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 flat exchanges, and certainly the net area has been dominant at the moment for the yeah, ladies. Yeah. Um, certainly worked to the rear of the corners for um, Birgit Mikkels and Mikkel Fuchs. Could definitely be a tactic which they could use here at the start of the second half of the game. Oh, the lift was a little short, but Fadila really is playing with a lot of confidence, like you said, Nathan. Turning, twisting the shuttle. I mean, Indonesian players famous for their skill, and he really is playing very well indeed. Two-point lead again, 12-10 in the opening game. Here it is, that serve over the top of his partner. It's be very difficult to see from Fuchs. Brilliant setup again from Fadila for his partner at the net. Smashing into the inside hip of Mikel Fuchs, who couldn't get it out and set it up for Angreni for the kill. Indonesians three points ahead. Just short. But that was such a tight low serve. Just clipped the net cord on the way through. Just took a bit of pace off the serve. Just dropped it short of the line. Oh! Oh! Kells going short this time as well. Yes, Players struggling 14, a little bit with the 11. low serve. Obviously, each tournament they go to, they play with different types of shuttles, and I'm wondering whether that comes into factors on the serve I think it certainly does uh, but these players they should be used to that now into the semi-final stage they've been playing here in, in this arena with these shuttles now for four or five days so they can't really use shuttles as an, as an excuse now for service mistakes back to 2 12-14 in the opening game 13 minutes been played Ball has been called in. Well, from up here in the commentary position, I have to say it looked like a flat one that actually landed outside the line. Well, Mikhail Fuchs absolutely devastated that that one was called good. And I must admit, Nathan, I thought that had gone long too. But only if the umpire in the chair can give a decisive overruling. It was a long way from where he was sitting and it was struck with such power. Fantastic defence again. Fuchs with the right idea of playing the softer shot. Just struggling with the execution at the moment. I think they're maybe getting a little bit frustrated, the German pair, because such strength on the defence by the Indonesian pair at the moment. They're finding it difficult to get through the Indonesian defence. It means they're playing a little bit tighter maybe than they normally would do, making mistakes. It opens up the biggest lead they've had in this opening game, 16-12. 
do the Germans have an answer to this style of play the Germans just delaying a game here they can they can sense the danger by the Indonesians Great rally again. I think that was going wide. And that one this time is called long. No doubt about that one. Two or three inches out of the back line. But again, it's the Indonesians who are pressurising. From, from what we can see over here on the midcourt, it looks like the Indonesians are moving forward when the game's in the midcourt and on the drives. And the Germans are actually just standing, deflecting. So it's the Indonesians trying to take the initiative at the moment. Definitely think there are a few gaps over the top for the German pair. They're insistent on constantly taking on this midcourt. I would just like to see the odd punch into the corners. That's better play. Switching the attack from one side to the other. And again, it's the soft drop shot in front of Angrani that does the damage. I think they've got to use that tactic. The defence is so strong currently from the Indonesians that they need to use the gaps on the court. They need to go over, they need to go in front. Back within two, 14-16. Another flick from Birgit Mikhaels. And this time it's wonderful defence from Mikhail Fuchs. He was under pressure immediately from the flick serve. And another drive out the back by the Indonesian pair. Maybe the German, the German pair weren't really watching the back line in the first part of this game because three out of the last four or five rallies have all gone out the back. So maybe it's a tactic to bring them in. Now just one behind, 15-16. Another flick serve from Mikels. work from the back this one lands on the line this time by the Indonesians um, constant attack there on Birgit Mikkels by the Indonesian pair didn't give uh, Mikkel Fuchs a chance to get involved in the rally slight misjudgment on the overhead shuttle landing good the Indonesians just require four points for the opening game 17-15 Lovely shot. That's a great defence from Fuchs. Brilliant rally. Beautiful skill from Fuchs, but it landing just wide. Tried to take the pace off the game with a reverse slice. I think Fadila completely controlling the game at the moment with his lifting. He's not giving any time for Mikkel Fuchs to get up. He uses big power jump smash. So he's only doing little half lifts. So he's not able to actually get a full smash on it at the moment. It's a very clever play by Fadila. All four players asking for a timeout. Empire can decide. Whether or not that is allowed, to be fair, that was probably the longest rally of the match. We haven't seen any change of tactics yet from the Germans coming out after the break. Do you think there's anything they can do really to change this game around? We've had consistency now of a two or three point gap all the way from the midpoint interview. Well, the Indonesians just requiring three. I think you're right, Nathan. The Germans have got to do something different to what's going on at the moment. It's still midcourt dominated by the Indonesians. I think Michael Fuchs has got to start playing everything close to the net or taking it away to the back. I fully agree on that. that we need a little change from the Germans here if they're to get back in the game. Brilliant from Fadila. Better from Birgit Mikkels straight in on the net. What a defence though from the Indonesians. How on earth did she get that back? 
and Graney, fantastic defence. And that's always the case. You get that one extra back, it puts the attacking players under pressure. And a mistake by trying to keep the attack by Mikel Fuchs there. Probably just a little bit frustrated that their attack isn't getting through. They just require two for the opening game, 19-15. a bad miss it's from Angreni the shuttle was quite high above the net she saw the opportunity she went for it 100% committed a little bit of spin on the shuttle from Mikels just caused the shuttle to go down a little bit earlier there really was a great opportunity though to get to game point change of shuttle from Fuchs feels he wants one that's going to fly a little bit quicker Brand new shuttles tend to do that. But they trail by three, 16-19. They've been playing for 20 minutes. Great short serve by Mikhail Fuchs there. Yeah. Fantastic net play from Mikhail. I mean, we've not seen enough of that in this opening game. That time playing, hitting the top of the net cord with a net shot. I think she has to challenge Angraini at the net here. Um, they're losing in the mid-court exchange, so I think Birgit Mikkels has got to, got to challenge Angraini at the net. Once again, great defence, but too much this time. Clever play by Mikel Fox switching the attack onto Fadila there when he was close to the net. He was probably expecting him to, to keep it on, keep the attack on his partner, but he actually switched the attack to Fadila. Clever play. And that draws them back within one point. Definitely signs of the net play coming in more from the Germans. Yeah, they've involved the net two or three times in the last couple of points. I think they've seen that as an opportunity for them and and, th and they're trying to take their chance here. 18-19, huge points now. Ah! This time, it's Angraini with the mistake into the net. Another great serve by Mikel Fox at the start of that rally. Three points in a row now on his serve, and he's there a little bit of nerves by the Indonesian pair at the end of this first set. Definitely a bit of tension on the arm on that last shot. But you're right, the serving from Fuchs has been incredibly good at this pressure situation. They have more experience, so you'd expect them to be stronger at the end of the well, set. Very quick serve from Fuchs. No! Oh! Oh! Once again, the mid-court exchange in favour of the Indonesians. Again, brings up game point, 2019. So easy sometimes to fall into that trap of just having a hard exchange with your opponents. I think Mikel Fox knew that the net was open there, he could have got the lift to get the attack for himself. Mikel Fox almost foot on the front line on return. Flick serve comes in. Brilliant defence. A well read from Angrini at the net. Great anticipation. Read the round the head shot. Little push by Mikel Fox. Angrini kills it to take the first set. And it is, in fact, the number four okay, seeds that take the opening game, 21-19. Fadila celebrating almost as if he was winning the entire match. I think he knows how important that first set was to this entire match. Okay, so it was the Indonesians that took the opening game. I think they stunned the Germans with the style of play. And they came out with a 21-19 lead. And once again, this is where the coaches can play a big part in a match. You know, 
We talked about it in the mid-interval. What difference do you think the German coaches are going to have to make here, Nathan? Well, Anthony, I think that they actually made the change too late in that game, near the end of, near the, end of the first set, where they started to play a bit more at the net. Birgit Mikhails was trying to get involved around the net area in exchanges uh, with, with Engraini, the Indonesian girl. Um, but it was a little bit too late. There was too much flat exchanges in the middle of the game, which, you know, the Indonesians were playing so strongly on defence and in the midcourt. And uh, the Germans did just change their tactic a little bit too late. But I don't think they'll be too downhearted. And I think they know if they come with the same tactics that they were using at the end of the second set, that they've got every chance of pulling this back level. Second game, level, flag. Now then, Nathan, in an arena like this, could there be a difference in ends? One end easier to play than the other? Um, potentially. I mean, we did see the Indonesian pair hit several shots out of the back of the court in the first set, so you just have to be aware that if the Germans are, are hitting a lot out, out as well, that there may be a drift towards t for the Germans hitting. Um, at the moment, we can't see, but I, w I would say it was just the Indonesian's pressure that was making the shutter go out the back. That's a fantastic take at the net from Angreni. Pouncing on the net cord. Important for the Germans here to get a good good start to the second set. This young Indonesian pair. A lot of confidence after the first set. Could be difficult to stop if they get a lead in the second. Bit of a misjudgment from Fadila. Leaving that one. Shuttle landing in. Great anticipation from Mikhail's, but the defence again from the Indonesians. Again, solid defence there by Padilla. Nothing oh. looks like it's going to go for him. Fantastic cross court. I think there was a bit of a miss hit on that one, Nathan, but he took his chance. And it ended up being an incredible trick shot. I think he was going actually for a full lift cross court there into the rear of the court. Maybe just caught the top of the racket. Ended up being a brilliant cross court block winner. He's definitely the player on form at the moment in this match. Seems to be dictating all the rallies. Very, very controlled, relaxed wrist. Two all, second game. And a bit of a swipe at the net from Mikhail's. Didn't move her feet at all. No, lack of movement there. She's so strong moving around the head and anticipating. Um, but like I say, slightly slow moving out to the forehand side that time. There's a loose serve from Angroni to start the rally. Got them under pressure straight away. Good attack from the Germans. Three all. I think they do have to really pressurise Angraini on the attack. The dealers look solid on defence at the moment, so I think they're going to have to, if they want to get back into this match, the Germans, they're going to have to pressurise Angraini on the attack. Just misses the cross-court block. The gap was there, he saw it. A little bit, a little bit too much. A couple of inches wide of the sideline. We're still seeing a lot of these hard, fast exchanges. Could the Germans even play a game where they literally don't hit any shots hard at all? I think so. I think they've got to take the pace out early in the rally. We see again a flat, hard rally. This time, a great drive by Mikel Fuchs, just into the left shoulder of Fadila. That normally so good on his forehand side when he's driving in this game so far. Germans lead 5-3 in the second game. The Indonesians winning the opening game 21-19. There it is, that mid-court exchange again. Quite often the case, it looks like Mikhail Fuchs is in control of these hard drives. But it's always the Indonesians that come up with one more shot. No, yeah, exactly. One more shot back every time puts the pressure on him to hit an even better shot. We know Mikhail Fuchs 
Michael Fox's main tactic and his best area of his game is the drive game, so he'll be finding this very frustrating at the moment. Here we go again into that mid-court. And that one's gone long, well judged from Fadila. The scores are level. Surprised to not see the German coach who's getting more involved in between the rallies. The coach is quite a long way from the court in this arena. Maybe they're struggling to hear them. Definitely. Possibly they had the time in between in between the games there to get over what they what they wanted the change of tactics to be for the German pair. But we haven't really seen a change so far in the second set. Game's going very similar to how the first set went. Good defence from the Germans. This is what they've got to do. They've got to match the Indonesians on defence. Birgit Mikkels just missing that last one, but they were doing a better rally there at the start, just matching the Indonesians. Rather well, interesting style of defence. Almost crouching down to try and retrieve that one. Shuttle called wide down the line. Seven, that was six. very, very close. The Germans questioning the call. The Germans celebrated like they'd won the rally, but it was very tight. We're sitting right on this on this sideline and it was very, very close. Seven, six. You wouldn't want to be a linesman sometimes. That one looked like it landed on the edge. Fadila shaking his head at his partner's serve. She looked very tentative on that low serve. Incredible for somebody who has such impeccable racket skills that can struggle with a low serve. 7 all, second game. Spin on that net shot from Fox was incredible. Mikael Fuchs taking the pace out a lot in this rally at the moment. Once again with the skills. Oh, net cord by Andreina, great shot. Skill at the net, the Indonesian girls always have fantastic racket skills. Mikael Fuchs did almost everything he could to win that rally. Eight, Playing with great skill everywhere. I mean, that last shot wasn't even a bad one. And his opponent made it look like a poor shot. No, I like the tactic by Mikael Fuchs in that rally, though. He was pressurising him. He was at the net a lot himself there. And he never actually gave away the lift. He was keeping the net, using skill, crossing, straight net shots. Oh, oh that's clever. Great retrieving from the Kells in the backhand corner. Fadila had a fantastic change of direction over the top of Mikel Fuchs. Got himself in a great position and then went for a reverse slice drop shot where probably would have kept the pressure on, would have been a better option for him. Scores a level again, eight all. Well read by Mikael Fuchs, a good low serve from Birgit Mikkels. The Germans take the lead. Can they take the initiative in this game? No one's really grabbed the initiative so far. Been tight all the way. Who's going to get to the mid-game interval? A lot more net play now from the Germans. Oh, 
well read by Anguini. Again, <laughs> such a strong, strong point now, mixed doubles with females at the net. They always have to be on the move. They always have to be looking, anticipating. No longer do we want want the females standing in the centre of the court. They always need to be reading it one way so they give themselves the best chance to get into an attacking position. Both girls on court doing it really well in this match. The flip serve from Angrani really is struggling with that area of the game. She is. They're not really winning many points now on Graney's serve, so it's really difficult when you know you're only going to potentially be winning points for Dealer on his own serve, so he knows how important to win points on Angrani's serve is. 10-9, the Germans lead. Oh. Fantastic drive from the girls. That gives them the mid-game lead, 11-9. Birgit Mikael's moving forward there on the mid-court. That's what they have to do. They can't be static and just deflect it. They've got to move forward and be aggressive in the mid-court against the Indonesian pair. Now the umpire having a few words with the Indonesian players. Be interesting to know exactly what he was saying. Another tight set though, no one really able to string more than two or three points together, Anthony. I think, you think the Germans maybe not using their experience to kind of an advantage that they could do here, trying to just get away from the, uh, get away from the Indonesians a little bit more with, this, with the softer play and then building the attack for Mikko Fuchs as a smash. Well, it does seem to be very frantic. You know, the rallies are going very quick. In between rallies is very quick. You know, a big part of Bampton is psychology you know making your opponent wait changing shuttles you know wiping your sweat away from your face just to upset your opponents a little bit would have thought the Germans may have adopted a bit more of that into the game but big it is the Germans that lead 11-9 big part of the game here if the Germans can get two or three points here they'll get a good gap on the Indonesian yeah. pair and there's a quick one for Birgit Mikels again anticipating at the net up early, she looks like she's moving forward a lot better now. 12-9. Definitely see a turn in the tide. Pressure being applied on by the Germans, especially around the net. 12-9. You can visually see the difference in body language from the German pair now. You know, when they're on defence or even in the mid-court, they're about a foot further up the court. Maybe there is an element of wind in the arena. One pair feeling like they can pressure more from the end that the Germans are at. Yeah, possibly. I, I I'm not going to 
Yes.
chapter 10.
won by Michael Fuchs, Bergen Michaels, 1921, 21-19.